You teach your child how to walk and talk, use the potty and ride a bike. Why would teaching your child how to settle to sleep be any different? Stay tuned to find out the biggest misconception about sleep and how you could help your little one get the replenishing sleep he needs to thrive so that your whole family can live more healthily, feel refreshed and fully enjoy your time together each day. Protecting and providing for our babies and young children is instinctive and you'll do it from the day they're born. As a species, we birth our young at a relatively underdeveloped stage and the dependency of a newborn baby is huge compared to other mammals who were born able to walk within minutes or hours of birth and begin to venture and explore independently. The amount we do for our babies at newborn stage can never be considered too much but how are we to recognise when it's time to allow them a little room to try things without having us do it all for them all the time? I remember my daughter holding her own bottle and drinking from it at just four weeks. She always has wanted to do it herself, but some babies won't be too bothered and will happily have you do everything for them for years. When does your providing and protecting become over-parenting. What if it sabotages your child's opportunities to develop and grow? And what are the consequences? You're a parent or a caregiver just like me and you probably already recognise how important you are as a role model for your little one. You look at your baby and engage with actions and words and he's learning from every aspect of your tone and facial expressions. This early communication is some of the first teaching you do as a parent. When he's pulling up to stand, watching your every move and trying to copy you as he learns to walk, you hold his hands and hurt your back over supporting him while his face is alight with the joy of taking those steps with you. You support and assist him gradually, reducing your input until he's got it. And then there's that magical moment when he takes those first unaided steps into your arms. Watching and practicing, he would have got there eventually with learning to walk, but your assistance, encouragement and support helped him to master it sooner. Is this overparenting? Doing too much? No, carrying him everywhere or putting him in a pram, scooping him up and not giving him an opportunity to learn, that would be overparenting in this scenario. You role model, you guide, you teach and you support. Tell me, what's been the most satisfying thing you've taught your little one to do so far? Let me know in the comments below. A while ago, I saw the reception class at school had a project to make castles and wow, the castles I saw being taken into school. <laughs> they were incredible. Some were quite obviously made by the parent rather than a four-year-old. It got me thinking, is helping a child with a science project or craft project doing too much for them? Well, I wouldn't do my son's math homework for him, so why would I build a craft project for him? Our input as the parent is to guide and to teach, so I'll challenge my children with questions and explore their ideas. I'll help them to discover the answer to the questions without just telling them the answer. Offering a pair of hands to hold a piece of the project in place is different to doing the whole project for them. The interaction and collaboration from you is valuable to your child. I know I'd rather my child took in a project that was led by them, not done for them. If all those castles were truly child-led with parental help, they wouldn't have turned out quite the way they did. Hey, I just hope the parent and child together had a lot of fun doing it. That's what we all really want and what matters most. Interestingly, we find it difficult to adapt the same theory to teaching our children to settling to sleep. Being able to settle to sleep is a form of self-regulation and self-regulatory skills are crucial for life. Babies are not born with these skills, but they are born with the potential to develop them. It's our job as parents to create the ideal learning environment and be the supportive relationship that meets our baby's needs to enable this development to take place. This does not mean we just do it all for them. And when we look back over how dependent they are on us in those early weeks, when we do pretty much everything for them, it can be difficult to see when this shifts and when we need to make that space for their development. 
our ethos on sleep training is that it's responsive, meaning you don't ignore your little one, you respond. However, the response needs to be conducive to helping your little one develop healthy and crucial skills. Not a rescue response where you do it all and sabotage any learning opportunity for your baby. Research shows that by establishing routines, modeling social behavior, and creating and maintaining supportive, reliable relationships, you can facilitate the development of self-regulation for your baby. Once your baby is over 18 weeks or speeding up to that six month milestone, I encourage you to be aware of how involved you are in the process of him settling to sleep. How much do you do and how much does he do? How are you responding when he needs some help? It might be time to get clear on this so both parents or all caregivers can be consistent for the little one. They need this consistency so they can rely upon the relationships with those caring for them and also to enable confusion-free learning as they develop new skills. Once your baby or young child masters the self-regulatory skill of settling to sleep, she'll soon be able to resettle herself back to sleep when she wakes in the night, which all humans do. This will mean an undisturbed night for you and you'll wake up rested and refreshed and able to function at full potential for the day. I know you want to be the very best for your little one. I'm a mum, I get it. We'd give them the moon and the stars if we could, but I encourage you to remember doing it all for them is not the best thing for them. Be the best teacher, guide, role model and supportive relationship in your child's life so they can thrive in every way. If this has been insightful, please write in the comments below what it is that you liked best. And if you know someone who would benefit from watching this, please do share this video with them as well. Don't forget, there's a link below where you can take our brilliant little quiz to determine the best approach to sleep training your child based on his temperament traits. The link is below, so unlock this powerful information now. And until next time, Sleep soundly, live with vibrance, and make your impact today.